So we keep in our prayers this day Paul and Gail McKim, Burl Ruth, Shirley Emmerich, Rod Spies, Barb Kessler, Russell Miller, Chris Bashore, John Hopman, Kathy Shirk, Sharon Hartraff, Carol Lape, Bob Dutt, Rod Spies, I already said him, and Denny Bowers. Um, outside worship continues. We didn't have it this past Sunday because of the rain and the storms, uh, but you'll need to bring your own chairs, blankets, hats, sunglasses, masks for your safety and the safety of others. Um, and uh, that will continue to work. The 800 number service uh, is being recorded as well. You can check that out. It's listed in the newsletter. If you need groceries, meals, someone to talk to, financial help, please call us and we will respond to those needs. Let's pray together. Lord, help me to hear you saying, I am your hope over all the other voices. Lord, your word says you are the hope for hopeless so I'm running to you with both hands stretched out and grabbing on. Fill me up with hope and give me a tangible reminder this day that hope is an unbreakable spiritual lifeline. God, you know these things in my heart that I barely dare to hope for. Today I give them to you and I trust them to you. For God, you are my hope and I put my trust and my faith in you. The reading this day comes from 2 Timothy, the second chapter. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. That is my gospel, for which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is sure. If we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of this and warn them before God that they are to avoid wrangling over words, which does no good but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. So do you remember the first time you heard the word anti-disestablishmentarianism? A word with 28 letters that I'm not sure any of us really knows what it means, but it's cool to say such a big word. Well, there's a two-letter word, a whole alphabet shorter than the anti I can't even stand, <laughs> that we all know the meaning of. That little word is if. Its meaning was taught to us very early in life. If I wanted to go out and play, I had to do my chores first. If I wanted a new toy, I had to shovel walks or deliver newspapers to earn the money. If I wanted to play in the band, I had to practice my trumpet. If I wanted to learn how to swim, I had to go in the water and practice. Life was pretty much that simple. If made the biggest little word in scripture, if maybe the biggest little word in scripture, from the opening sentences of Genesis to the closing verses of the New Testament, that little word if plays an important role. If Adam and Eve obeyed God, they would live in Eden. If they sinned, they would be expelled. And the closing words in the book of Revelation is, if anyone adds or takes away from the words of scriptures, there will be consequences. Between these if bookends are more than 1,500 sentences that begin with that conditional conjunction. If I find in Sodom 50 righteous, if my people humble themselves, then I will forgive their sin and heal their land. If I forget the O Jerusalem, if you are the Son of God, if the salt has lost its flavor, if the right eye offends thee, if anyone comes after me, if you have ears to hear, you are my friends if you do what I command you. If a man shall die, shall he live again? If your enemy hungers, if we walk in the light, if we love one another. There are well over a thousand more. In our reading for today, Paul has a short burst of four ifs. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. 
If we deny him, he will also deny us. And if we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Two positive ifs and two somewhat negative ifs. I guess ifs can go either way. Maybe a lot of life swings on that little word if. Success or failure, winning or losing. If that tackle was made or missed. If the batter gets a base hit or strikes out. If the ball goes swoosh through the hoop or bounces on the rim. Businesses make it or fail. Students pass or flunk depending on the grade and the final paper of the exam. Then there are the if onlys, right? If only I was young again. If only I had more money. If only I was smarter. If only I had gone to college. If only I knew what I, then what I know now. If only I had taken out insurance. If only. The words that so often complete this phrase are seldom happy ones, right? But they make the point that some of the pivotal decisions of life center on that minuscule word, if. If is the word that can confront us. We in our arrogance try to confront God with it. If you get me out of this foxhole, I'll dedicate my life to you. If you heal my father, I will go to church every Sunday. If you make my business prosper, I will tithe. Please hear this. If does not work that way in the kingdom of God. We don't get to make the deals. We can only accept or reject them. And I'm not sure we can even reject them, if I'm honest. Paul says, if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. That is really all about Christ's actions. Jesus' death, Jesus reaching out to save God's people from their sin. But Paul goes on. If we deny him, he will also deny us. Sounds pretty harsh. But again, the sentence has not yet ended. Listen. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. For he cannot deny himself. Did you hear that? God remains faithful. Even if we are not. God is faithful. And that is where the sentence ends. And that final if makes it pretty clear to me. God is faithful even when we are not. God has the final word. And I believe that word is love. May we boldly live into the faithfulness of God's love. If only we can. Well, if we can't, we know God can. Will you join me in prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. No if in that prayer, by the way. So this benediction has no conditions either. It's God's love given to us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Not only if you're good, but all the time. Be safe, be well. Amen.